Hi, everybody, and welcome to the final edition for 2017 of the SoCal Prep Report. I'm Robin Hood, along with Santa Claus. Glad you oh, joined us oh, tonight oh. for the big show. Of course, we're in a festive, uh, we're in a festive mood right now, Bob. It is Christmas. Right before Christmas. And, uh, yeah, and a lot of teams in the state got presents this year. Yes, they did. Yes, they yes. did. We got three in, local teams. In got the form early, of state titles, yes. Early Christmas yeah. present. And the Love thing is, it. for the city section, I'm especially happy because I don't think the city section has ever had two state champions no. in the same season, Bob. Nope. And congratulations to Crenshaw and to Narbonne. Is that who they were? That's who they right. were. Making sure? They, was it West or something like no, that? No, they, they, they did it. They or both. Uh, nope, they both went up to Sacramento. And uh, took home state championships. Congrats. City section, man. It's great. Right. Randy's going to talk about it. Randy's I know he is, but what did I say earlier this season? The city section doesn't get the respect sometimes, but they got it now. You can bet on that. Did you say that, Bob? I did say okay. that earlier this I'm season. I really you, did. Man. I really did. You're a good guy, Bob. Go I back. Like Look at the You're tape. sage. All right, let's go to the scores. Modern day. <laughs> Winning the national championship yes. by virtue of a big victory over De La Salle. A team they had failed to beat four prior times, Bob. They're 0-4 against De La Salle. This time around, not even close. And it wasn't even this close. No, it wasn't. 52-21. Uh, modern day just blitzed them right from the start. Uh, it was 21 nothing in the first yeah, quarter. Yeah, it was. Eight it, minutes to play in the first it, quarter. It, it was 21 nothing. It, it was over early. De La Salle completely outmatched it. We knew they were. We knew this was going to be uh, the result pretty much here in modern day. We really had their way. JT Daniels, 20 of 30. Is that two, all? 233 yards. Wow. Three touchdown that. passes, over 60 yards rushing, two more touchdown runs. So he accounted for five of the touchdowns in this one. Amon Ross St. Brown uh, caps off his prep career. Where he's going to college, he can go anywhere he wants after this, but uh, not, not, not before getting eight catches for 137 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Now, which one was that? In this one as well. Amon Ross St. Brown. I heard that guy's name uh, pronounced 50 different times on the uh, telecast, yeah. Bob. I couldn't tell you what uh, his real uh, name yeah. was. Uh, unfortunately, uh, th there were some people that uh, kind of had it mispronounced there. But uh, anyway, Amon Ross. They could have pronounced, pronounced Rollins' Ra name. Are you kidding me? The head coach of modern day, the dad, you don't know who his name Poor is? coach. If you, don't, if you don't know Bruce Rollinson. So for, for those watching out there, don't know Bruce Rollinson. Thank you very much. Modern day, 52 21 first state championship uh, that comes on the heels of the first CIF championship for the Monarchs since 1999 and it had taken them that long to win another CIF title now they have a state championship and their third national championship they got more national championships recently than anything else but first time all, winning states so. all under Bruce Rawlinson's watch now now here's the talk Do you think Bob Johnson's really upset about that win yes all right <laughs> good well, all right B Bruce Rawlinson told me today, best team he's ever coached, right? So no surprise there. Best modern day no team doubt. he's ever coached. I have no doubt. Most but complete team he's ever is coached. is this the best team in the history of Southern California, in the history of the CIF Southern section, in the, in the history of this area? Is this the best football team we've seen take the field you're, ever? You're going to laugh, but later on in this show, we're going to see the CIF Southern section Hall of Fame inductions. And I'll tell you what. That 89 Paramount team was about as good a team as I've ever seen in my life, Bob. And I go back a long way on this. That Paramount team destroyed everybody, left nothing but bodies in their wake for three years, Bob. Well, uh, and yeah, that was probably the best football team I've ever seen. Modern Day is pretty good. That, but matter, matter of fact, in 88, I believe Modern Day and uh, Paramount mixed it up. Mm -hmm. Paramount got the best of them. They had the, the Starks brothers. Remember the Starks brothers? Oh, yeah. Transferred in late well. in the season and Remember didn't make well. a difference. Nope. But uh, this, that's what I love about it, because we, we can debate and we can talk about it. There have been some great teams over the years, but the best one I've ever seen is this, this modern was day the team. Most complete, best one I've seen in 26 years. The most complete years. team. And it's, I'll yeah, tell you what, absolutely. The I'll most tell you what team. gives this modern day team the edge over everybody else that I've ever seen, and it's the play of the offensive line. Their line is so dominant. Not to mention their, their, their junior quarterback is just on point with everything yeah. he does. No, JT Daniels completely yeah. dialed in on – point with every one of his receivers you're right so, that offensive line every kid is d1 uh there's only one underclassman on that on that line uh, miles moreau he's gonna he's be the guy that comes back next year but everybody a d1 player two d1 running backs like i said uh, the, the the wide receivers it's it's an embarrassment of riches and, and you talk about the greatest of all time i gotta give it to this one right here i did i Hey, Paramount, there's some Bosco teams. I'm, I'm sure we go back to Anaheim High in the, in, the, in the 50s or whatever. Somebody would have something to say about some of the great teams over the years. But Well, I think, there's, I think their quarterback should just take the GED and get out now. Go he's, NFL. 
He, what are you going to He's going to go make a little pit stop at USC first. Oh, no. that, he's, that's his plan. Listen, he's fantastic. He's got another year to go. Uh, Modern day's got to be very happy. They have a lot coming back, too, Bob. They may have yeah. Brown coming back, but they have tons of stuff. And if their offensive line is anywhere near as good as it was this year, and you give that, you give JT all that time, boy. Yeah. Watch out yeah. next season. So true. And I also want to, uh, I also want to give a little shout out to Jack Genova. Fifteen tackles in that uh, state championship winning game. Uh, great to see him come back. He, don't forget, he had the the injury last year. He wasn't able to play in that CIF championship game. Came all the way back from it and uh, was a standout player on defense all season long, but especially in the state championship game. All right, we're going to have more on Modern Day in a couple minutes here. But right now, I guess we're going to talk to Randy Rosenblum oh, because yeah, city. the city. Had two winners this year, Narbonne and Crenshaw. Mm. Normally, it's it's usually Crenshaw or Dorsey, but this year, right. Narbonne, Crenshaw went to states, and uh, both won. Let's go to Rosenblum. Happy holidays for the city section with Narbonne and Crenshaw winning state football championships. Narbonne in the 1A knocks off Pittsburgh 28-21. This is a game where the Gauchos trailed 21-0 in the second quarter in Sacramento. But you know by now that Gauchos have Jamar Jefferson, the great running back. He rushes for 158 yards and two scores in the comeback. And Jalen Chapman throws to Aaron McGee for seven yards with eight minutes and 25 seconds of playing time remaining to give him the lead. A little bit later in the fourth quarter, Logan Taylor picks up a fumble and gallops better than 70 yards to seal the victory. They win it 28-21. This is the second state title in three years, seven city titles in 10 years. They end the season on a 10-game winning streak, averaging 55 points a game and allowing less than eight. What a fabulous year, fabulous 10 years it has been for the Gauchos, and we should appreciate what they have done, Narbonne and Manuel Douglas, over the last decade. Crenshaw in the 4AA gets to host the state finals, and they knock off Placer of Auburn in an absolute classic 46-43. Isaiah Johnson, the transfer from Los Angeles High School, throws five touchdowns, two of them to Rayshon Williams, the gifted 6-foot-4-inch wide receiver. Solomon Hassan rushes for 104 yards in the victory. And Joseph Williams, Rayshon's brother, makes the critical interception in the end zone with just five seconds left. And again, that seals the victory. What a victory it indeed it was for Crenshaw. The Cougars winning it 46-43, their first state football championship. You know it's the time of year where we acknowledge guys who seem to get all the awards. But there's a couple guys who are short in stature, but are long on talent. One of them is E.J. Gable of Arlita High School. He is your East Valley League most valuable player. He's but 5'5", 140 pounds. He's only a junior. He leads the Mustangs to a perfect 6-0 record in the East Valley League. He rushes for 1,405 yards. He catches 16 passes. But he also plays defense, where he had 34 tackles, Three interceptions. They won seven games in a row. They get into the D1 playoffs, where they finally lost to the eventual champion, the San Fernando Tigers. But what a year for Gable. We'll enjoy him next year when he comes back as a senior. And there's another guy who's short in stature and long in heart, and that's Ernie Arcia of Southgate. He's 5'9", the 170-pound senior. He's the Eastern League most valuable player. He throws for 3,438 yards in his senior year and 42 touchdowns. And here's what I love. The fact that he rushed for 1,126 more yards and ran it in 14 times. The Rams finished the year with a sparkling 9-4 record and 4-1 and in the Eastern League. And they were the co-champs, but they win the championship. And when they went into the playoffs, they were the highest seeded team because they had knocked off Garfield earlier in the year. But really, the biggest story of the season and maybe ever in the city section is they have two state football champions in Crenshaw and Narbonne. A fabulous accomplishment. And when you think when Narbonne won their first state title in 2015, now they have two state titles in three years. That was the first time in over 100 years a city team had won a state championship. Narbonne, before that 100 years ago, manual arts. But this year, this year, we get Crenshaw and Narbonne winning state titles. Rich and Bob, now that's a very Merry Christmas.
All right, Randy, thank you very much. And yes, a big Christmas present for Crenshaw and Narbonne. Thanks. I still want to see it. Narbonne modern day. I'm calling for it. Get them uh, out there. That game would be a slaughter. Don't even go Get there, the helmets man. and the pads back on. I want to see it on a neutral field. You're the only one that wants to see I, that it game. It doesn't matter. I still slaughter. want to see it. I want to see Narbonne's defense and modern day's offense. Just, It'd be just a let me slaughter. See it. Modern day, it 52 be, to 20. It might be, but it would still be fun. Anyways, congratulations to the city section. Good to see the city section is finally catching up. Think yeah. about it. I mean, they had their first state contender in wrestling. Uh, we talked about it a couple years ago. That's right. They, they won, uh, the guy won his right. first state title from Mount Camino Real. Johnny Peraza or something like that. I never forget this kid. Sophomore, one state, was the first state champion in the, in, in the history of the city section. So the city finally getting some recognition after you, over 100 years respect. of existence, the city's man. getting respect, I told you. Tearing it up, baby. Getting there. All right, let's take a look at some other scores from the uh, playoffs and see how your favorites did, if you have any out there. In this ballgame, I'm not sure Folsom – over La Mesa Helix, uh, man, I don't know what to tell you, Bob. La Mesa is pretty good, but uh, Folsom just a little bit better this season, just a touchdown better. That was yeah, a close one. we know Helix came in with that great offense, but uh, just couldn't play enough defense here to uh, to stop Folsom. Ninety-one and points on that board, Bob. We, we you know we we talked about it. We thought the Southern teams were going to get just about all these state championships. Didn't quite work out that way. Folsom, one of the Northern teams, to I only called to take a state winning, champion. Man, that was my that was my pit. And Narbonne and Crenshaw. How about lot, that? Lot, lot, of, <laughs> lot of Northern teams actually ended up winning in this one. All right, let's continue on. Take a look at some of the other games. It was Narbonne against there it Pittsburgh. Is. Uh, we mentioned Pittsburgh, number 65 in the country, man. Narbonne handled them 28-21, as Randy said. Don't forget, Pittsburgh's the only team that gave uh, De La Salle a game up there, uh, up in the northern the uh, section not, up there De La this year. was living a lie, I, I hear you. Come I hear you. De, De La Salle was not the De La Salle of past. Mission Vieja would have beat Miss De La Salle this year. Centennial would have beat De La Salle. Bosco would have right. beat De La Salle. They all would have beat them. Glenn, Norwalk. I mean, come on, man. Maybe even El Rancho. You never know. Beat those guys. Come you on. They weren't that good this year. Know. But I'm not going to take it away from modern day. Cajun. Here's San Mateo and Sarah. Excuse me. San Mateo, Sarah against Cajon. It's and as, 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 as we've seen funny. Cajon, Bob. Cajon, they had, we they, know. Yeah, it's Cajon. They had Cajun. <laughs> they have, somebody has called it that <laughs> before. Don't I get me wrong. It. Don't forget. It's uh, been done. Cajon, very strong. <laughs> victories over Downey, over Rancho Verde. Impressive victories at that. Yes. But uh, couldn't sustain it against uh, San Mateo, Sarah. And this is what happens in state. When you're not familiar with the competition, there's no way to judge it, man. You can't. You don't have no common opponents. Even though there's less schools up in the northern section like De La Salle, they're, they're in the finals every year for a reason. There's a finite number of schools up there that play good football. Down here, there's tons. And I think that means something when, when you know, teams like Sarah have been there time and time again. Cajon's kind of getting there uh, you know, for the first time. You know, maybe maybe just a handful of times they've had a chance to play at this kind of a level. Even if they might be the better team, still those kids from Sarah, they know how to play in these big <laughs> yeah, games. Yeah, they did. They did they a good got job, done. Bob. They Grace got it done. Brethren losing to yeah. Mountain View St. Francis. There you see the score, 22 to 13. You know, Grace Brethren, got to give it to them, Bob. A small school. Small school. They school. played. They played schools with 5,000 kids in it in the playoffs this year. Who does that? Why are they doing it? They did. I know. They did pretty good. They did. It's good to see. It's good yeah. to see those, those small schools get up there and, and, and Bob, take their shot. I'll never shot. understand why these schools with huge populations can't win. you got well, at least 2,500 boys, man. Come on. You're, you're talking about some of the schools in the Moore Leagues that you're referring to? Yes, I am. Well, continue on, Bob. Uh, Bishop Diego, a, a team from the South, they get a win. 41. Big win. <laughs> this is one of the few blowouts uh, from the weekend. 41-6 over Shasta from Redding, California. So... Uh, big win for Bishop Diego. Again, another San Diego team uh, getting a big win over there. Yep, Shasta Redding. Again, Bob, we said we knew absolutely nothing about no, it. Well, nobody did. <laughs> nobody did, and they still don't. <laughs> they so. still was only six points. Yeah, that's right. Thing. And then your boys at Spring uh, Valley Steel Canyon, Bob, Steel. against your Half Moon. Build up in Half Moon Bay, Bob. I your know. property values just sunk a little bit. I thought, huh? man, I've been up to Half Moon Bay. You know how gorgeous it is up there? Up Why there? do you lie? Oh, I, Say so, I have a home in Half Moon Bay. So I got seven and a half acres up there. Big deal. It does. But uh, they couldn't get it done in this one. <laughs> Two points less than uh, Steel, Ca Steel Canyon getting there. Good for Steel Canyon. Well, I've heard up nice at Half Moon, they're still going to have a parade for the kids, which is great. That's all right. right. The city section, Crenshaw there against Auburn. They beat the SEC. All right. And uh, there you see it, 46-43. Auburn Plaster Bob. I like it. I like Unbelievable. that. Unbelievable. I, like I like the fact that the city section hosted a home game in the state playoffs. I'm glad it was Crenshaw Bob. Uh, remember this one, Milpitas from Way up yeah, north, El Centro, yeah. southwest from El Centro, way down south. You yeah. probably, probably you couldn't find two, two teams on more opposite they, ends of the state here. They have to have a layover just to get up there from the south to the north there, Bob, for the game. Look at that. Milpitas uh, yeah. comes up with uh, the big Jets win over southwest. Field. It's a long way, buddy. 
four point. Lots, lots of points being scored. Look at these big scores. Everybody's in the 40s, it seems yeah, like. Yeah, this one, this game wasn't uh, very good. McClymans from Oakland uh, yeah, over uh, Gold. Yeah, McClymans. Uh, Vis- again, Vis- how's Visalia in the south? Visalia is nowhere near the south. It's nowhere near it. Southern California. I love the fact that they're in the south. All right. All let, right. them, let them up there. Visalia. Is that it? We got any more scores? A little short. I think there's a couple, couple more. more. Oh, Catella. We have Catella. more. I forgot. We got yeah. two Orange County teams we got to talk about here. Catella, Catella. going for that state Go title. Finally runs into the uh, the big bad Fortuna team, 54-33, and uh, we got the orange game too. One more is yeah, orange. Orange went down orange in their lost, state championship game. Orange lost, man. It was a good game. Yeah, well, that was a good game. Orange blew it. We got the score from the orange game. It happens. Not all right. All right, we, orange we lost. It. They did. Unfortunately, orange lost. Close ball game. Three overtimes. Four overtimes. Uh, whatever. To Strath- Strathmore got him third. Is 31. Where's Strathmore at, Bob? Have you ever uh, been there? Sure. Sure, that's in Montebello. Hold Have on, you ever let, been to Strathmore? Let, 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 let me ask Alexa. All right, never Alexa, mind. Alexa, where's Strathmore? That's yeah, Allison. Allison knows oh, where all Oh, That's are. right. Allison's our own version of Alexa. San here. Francisco, Galileo, 38, Calexico, Vincent Memorial, my brother. Two schools with three names, Bob. That <laughs> never <laughs> happens in the that's, state. No, that's, that's the classic. first time in the state that's ever happened. That's I guarantee classic you right state now. football right there. Galileo. Mm. Did you yeah. love that? Galileo High School. Absolutely. 38-20. Why shouldn't Galileo have a high school? Why not? No, he did a lot of stuff. The toilet, so he does. You know, he should get some run, Bob. <laughs> All right. Or if you have, where are we going no. now? We're going to the top ten, the final top ten of the CIF Southern section, and this is how it came down. This is the crew here voting on this, and let's take a look at where they stand. Modern day Bosco, is unbelievable. This Allison? Did she come up with this one again? No, nah, we wouldn't let her vote after last All time. Right. Didn't let you vote either. You there screwed it, it up is, too. The final top ten. Modern day runs <laughs> the table. <laughs> Yeah, they did. They absolutely 20 and 0 the on the season. Yep. Unbelievable year. <laughs> Un- Seven top 25 teams they played this Unreal. year, Bob. Unreal. Why? Why on earth is Narbonne number nine? Why not? No, <laughs> no, no. Bob, Nar- they're not going to beat Bosco Modern Day. They're not going to beat Corona. That's already been proven. Uh, they're they're going to beat Upland. Orange, Orange they're going to beat Bob. Bob. No, no, no. They would beat J. Sarah. No, no, they would uh, not. I, I give them every chance Bob, against J. Sarah. You, you can do what you want. This I'm is sorry. Where they, it landed. Uh, Narbon needs to be slotted in right below Mission Viejo, right in Upland spot. Sorry, you got to switch those. You got to switch those Why spots right there. Why do you got it? Because I'm saying it. Nar- Narbon won a state title, so scoring what? 77,000 so points a game, giving and, and up you two. Know what? If Bosco would have played the team, the, the team Narbon played, Bosco would have won a state title too. So would a Centennial. So would have Orange yeah, County Bob, Upland Rancho. All those teams would have won. That's what happens when you go to the open division. You got to face Bob, Modern Day this year. Bosco would have any choice to, but to Bosco be in the would open beat division. everybody on that list but Modern Day, and they did beat everybody on that list but Modern Day. Not everybody. Well, just about. They, well, they didn't get to play everybody. Modern Day beat twice. But they would have beaten everybody. They lost twice the Modern Day this year. I get, I get it. Buddy. All right. I like it, Bob. You're sticking it for your neighborhood and all that. But I, I, that's I not just, holding much water I, I here with me right now, I would love to see right Narbonne now, a little higher here because I think they deserve it. Bob, what's wrong with Pauly? They have every – they got 50 D1 athletes every year, and they just can't get off that, that ledge. Well, the, it's, it's – it's, it's, you know, ever since Raul Lara left over there, you, I, don't, I don't know. I, I just don't know if it's uh, – are they getting the kids? Are they getting the kids that Laura Bob, used to get over 6, there? they got 6,000 kids. What do you mean are they getting I, the kids? I, they got 6,000. I, I know they've got six, How many Guys of them, transferring in all the time. How many were D1 football players like they used to have there at Pauly? They're same kids, same neighborhood, man. All right, then. So then, so then you know? what do you attribute it to? I don't know, man. It's, I think it's just tough coaching today, period, with all the fundraising you yeah, have to do. It absolutely is. You know, you hear Ken Sitz talk about it, about he didn't have any of those worries when he was coaching at Parent. He just coached. Well, you, you, you know, there's only there's only so many schools like a modern day where Bruce Rawlinson, he does coach, but, you know, his role really is to get out there and, and really be like the CEO uh, of the football program. And that kind of helps because then he can turn it over to uh, the coaching staff well, who does the day-to-day coaching, and then he can kind of go out and be the ambassador. But not in a public school setting, you don't get a chance to do that. It also you got to do everything. It also depends how much money you got, as Bob told Bruce, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm just saying, man. These are coaches talking at the top level. <laughs> easy I'm now. I'm just repeating what they go, said now. Go it's easy. all they been printed. I'm not making up anything go, here. Go, Polly, go as Jim Neely would say. Go easy. All right, let's take a look at the national picture and take a look at the national, pretty much the national finals, Bob. Only a couple of schools are playing, and it's not going to change anything. Modern day number one, Allen, Texas, jumping over American Heritage. Because American Heritage didn't step out of Florida to play anybody. What happened to, didn't, didn't you tell me last week Bingham was playing somebody out They're of state? They're playing on the 23rd. Yep, there's, there's about five, there's about six or seven schools. i got to be at least eight then, right? Six or eight schools that are going to be playing on the 23rd in some kind of bowl. Uh, and um, it's going to be uh, Bingham, Utah, taking on St. Francis Academy of, of uh, Maryland, number seven versus number nine. Love that. 
Everybody else is done, man, except Allen, Texas is playing in a state championship game. That'll be their 16th game of the season, Bob. Don't forget, Narbonne was an eyelash and beating the number eight team in the nation right there, St. Louis of Hawaii. Narbonne had them lost by two points in that game. That's why Narbonne needs to be higher up. St. Louis is tough, my brother. And no kidding, and Narbonne was know. right with them every step of the yeah, way. Yeah, they're tough, man. Those guys are mean every down step there. Of the but way. again, there's, your, there's where it's going to end. We're going to end it now. Does it matter what happens with Utah no. and, and St. No, Francis? No, that won't matter. We might change it in the first of the year and give you a real final. But for right now, that's about as good as it gets in America. And what a, what a list that is right yes, there. Yes, indeed. Look at that. All right, let's Ooh. come back. And now we're going to talk about the uh, CIF uh, Hall of Fame, Bob. The Southern like Section that. had their Hall of Fame a few weeks back. Of course, uh, went out there and uh, just party with everybody, man. That's basically why we go to these things, Bob. We go there to <laughs> eat, you know, you throw get, a few back and relax sure. and and talk football, because that's what these things are all about. Uh, take a look, there's, there's a lot of guys got inducted. And uh, this is Ken Such coming up to the podium. We caught up with Ken Such, the former Paramount great. This guy went to three, state, three straight championship games, and here's what Kenny had to say. We're talking here with Ken Such. Ken Such uh, just got inducted to the Cheyenne Southern Section Hall of Fame as a coach. Ken, congratulations, long time in coming. Well, thank you. It was a big surprise. Uh, I've been out of it for a while now. You almost think like you uh, might have been forgotten. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Not a chance. Uh, of course, your Paramount teams were powerhouses. Uh, your 88, 80, uh, 87, 88 teams in particular uh, went through the top teams in the state what? on the way to the finals. Every week, you were underdog, 20 points, 14 points, and uh, just showed them what it was all about. Well, actually, our 90 team also. Uh, all three of those teams were right. ended up in the top uh, 10 of the, the uh, state of California. So I was very fortunate. Great players in those days. Manu, Lopez, yeah. know, Leon Neal. I mean, geez, it never stops. Yeah, you had some great uh, football players in that time. What are your thoughts on today's uh, induction? You went in with some great people. Yeah, in particular, Dave White, a guy who's been around as long as you have in about the same era, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it's, geez, you know, you wonder whether you belong here or when. Coach Mulligan from Pauley was Mike Gears, who was one of my assistant coaches right. for years, his football coach at Pauley. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm in pretty good company today. Yeah, you were. Uh, your thoughts looking back on your coaching career, uh, other than that Capitol Valley game, that third straight title that was taken away, I'll say it, it was, it was stolen from you. We televised that game, and it was a big ripoff. But uh, still, you got to look back fondly on uh, on your career. Paramount. Oh, yeah. All the, you know what? We had great community support. Great administration, uh, administrative support, great kids and families. I mean, you know, I, I never had to go through things that a lot of people complain about. Right. Uh, I mean, because everybody was with us, you know. And you know what? When you're all together, life gets easy and things ha good things happen. Yep, and they certainly did for you. Well, Ken, congratulations once again being recognized for your body of work. And it was a great career, man. Nobody can take that away from you. And uh, Paramount's looking good right now, too, huh? Remember, Pirate Pride together. Right on. All right, Ken, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Rich. What's Bob, there was never a coach I've met uh, then and now that was as good as Ken Such. Kenny Such was in an area where not a lot of guys would have taken that job in Paramount at that time. A lot of, you know, gang bang yeah. and all this stuff going on. But he was able to turn that program into one of the best programs in the country uh, during the latter part of the 80s. A lot of NFL guys, a lot of guys going to college off that team. Just did a phenomenal job. Guy was no nonsense about his approach. I mean, he. I have some great stories about such and going up against, you know, John Barnes at Los Alamitos in the finals, Bruce Rawlinson in modern day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, this stories just go crazy. But uh, uh, him and, of course, the other guy that we uh, were there for was for Dave White yeah. of Edison, a friend of the SoCal Prep Report. And we talked with Dave also at the induction ceremony. Congratulations on uh, joining the Sam Center Section Hall of Fame. It's got to be another... Feather in your cap, you had a great high school career, and this has got to be one of the pinnacles for you. Well, it's an honor to be with such great people that are introduced today and the past recipients. So I'm, I'm honored, I'm humbled. Uh, it's a pr privilege just to be at Edison High School 38 years, and all the great coaches I coached with, and the athletes that I got to coach, and just the friendships I made with Bruce Rollinson, John Barnes, Gary Meek, Jeff Brink, I can go on and on and on. So it is a great fraternity of coaches, and I'm honored. You just named a bunch of legends right there, man, and you're right there with them. Dave, congratulations, and continued uh, success on your retirement, man. Thank Sounds you. like you're having a good time. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank All you. All right, Dave. All right, Bob, there's Dave White. Dave White retired from football. 
um, last season. Uh, going to the state, lost in the semifinals. Yep, he did. He had, he had a chance at a state championship. Yes, he did. I but wish he, he would have got but it. But we want a CIF title going out, though. Yeah. Which, which, which was uh, good good for him. And uh, I like all those names that he mentioned. Jeff Brinkley, Newport Harbor, been there 20-some yeah. years, almost 30 years. Gary Meek over at Esperanza. Yeah. Great names. Uh, brings up some great memories from uh, from yesteryear back in those uh, North Orange County and Central Orange County days of Dave White battling some of those other great coaches. You know, you could take the lineage of these head coaches. You take the legends, Mary Nancich, for example. Oh, of course. They were able to trace uh, literally 350 coaches, some head coaches, some – just to marry Nancy alone during his 43 years as a head coach. Well, I mean, look, look at the look at the imprint that uh, a guy like Mary Nancy just left. Look at the imprint a guy like uh, Coach Such has left. Yeah. You know, I mean, these guys are legends for a reason. That's why they get in the Hall of Fame. I mean, these guys are at the absolute legends of Southern California football, and it's just fun to to be able to uh, thank them and and honor them in this way. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, they had some scribes from local rags getting inducted and some <laughs> administrators and all that, but there's nothing like a coach. And uh, matter of fact, Mary Natchez's name was dropped a few times at that thing. One, one oh, baseball I don't coach doubt was, it at all. <laughs> was trying to say that, uh, that Marion tried to bury him and made him coach baseball. He even knew nothing about baseball. He ended up winning like five CIF championships <laughs> at Esperanza and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's just amazing what happens uh, to coaches when they change. Coach is a coach, man. Don't care what the sport is. Once they understand it, they can motivate, you can win. So like Jason Negro, one of the great baseball players that ever came through the yep. Southern section. Now he's one of the best football coaches in the well, Southern section. he was a good football player. No, he player was a good football Bosco. player too. Don't get me wrong. And the right, funny but. thing about all that is Jason Negro was actually uh, played for uh, for the our, our boy of the commissioner. Yeah. Why God? Well, yeah, Rob Why yeah, God. Yeah. Absolutely. He played yeah. for him. So The six it, degrees of uh, <clears throat> Southern section. That's like 60 degrees right there. But yeah, it's all there, man. <laughs> Okay, well, listen, it's been a great year so far. Yes. we got a lot coming. Oh, we got, we're going to cover more, basketball, more, more. wrestling, baseball, softball. So, I'm sure there'll be some track and field in yep. there if somebody does something outstanding. And, of course, don't forget wrestling. If I hadn't mentioned that already, we're going to uh, do a lot of that. So it'll be, it'll be interesting uh, to see what's coming up, Bob. Oh, there's, there's, there's no better place in Southern California when it comes to wrestling. Well, the only thing about – see, here's what's funny about the sports season in SoCal. This year – the uh, football championship went through Los Angeles, went through L.A., Orange County, mm -hmm. and went through the southern section. Let's face it. Had a lot of teams in the top ten still do, in Corona, Centennial, Bosco, and modern day. Mission Bay was knocking on the door. Last season in basketball, the national championship went through Southern California and ended up with Bishop Montgomery. Right. Could have been a lot of schools. Could have been modern day, as another one we mentioned. Yeah. Could have been Corona. Uh, excuse me. Uh, could have been Chino Hills at the time. Right. They were in the running. So... You had a lot of schools that are ranked in the top 10, but again, every week in the Southern section was a playoff for the national championship. So won by Bishop Montgomery last year. Bob. Yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna see a lot of great basketball again this year. Uh, and don't forget girls basketball. We're gonna talk a lot of girls basketball. There's so many great uh, girls programs that are going on right now. Modern there's days, a few one out of the there, top. Bob. Oh, Come on, there's, there's a lot. Good, Come on. Don't forget Rosary won a state championship yeah, last year did. from Southern yeah, California. Did. So we'll, we'll we're gonna we're gonna cover them all and as many as we can and. We're going to get some coaches on, and we're going to talk some uh, SoCal hoops in Southern California. Right, it's going to be get a lot man, of fun. Get a man, man. We're going to change our set, too, man. We're going to have hoops in here. We're going to have full court games going every week. <laughs> I'd like you to check out our social media, Facebook. you got Twitter. Uh, what are these letter two, Bob? Instagram. That's Facebook. That's your forget Twitter. Forget it. Forget it. All right. I'd like to thank YouTube everybody. I'd like to wish you all a happy holiday. Hope you guys all have a good time. Merry Join Christmas, us. Christmas, happy holidays. Join us happy the first Friday in the new year for the SoCal Prep Report. On behalf of uh, Bob Gibson, the crew here. Carla Collini, our boss, and the rest of everybody else. We're saying so long from your friends here. Merry Christmas from the SoCal Prep Report. That's it.